Miguel says, who did you have winning the Spence versus Porter fight? You know, I had I had Porter the first half of the fight. Uh, I just thought Spence wasn't throwing enough punches. I thought he was fighting more of Porter's fight. And I did think that round one was a pick em. You know, uh, sometimes I think, I think we should, uh, I think judges should not forget that they have the right to issue a 10-10 round, right? If fighters aren't doing enough in round one and no one's dominating the other person, I think the judges have the right to create a 10-10 round. Um, that's going into the, into the depths of scoring. A lot of people don't know that you can create a draw round like that from a judging perspective, but because judges are opinionated, if they don't believe that anybody stepped up and took the round, they have the right to do that. So I think, um, I think round one was one of those rounds where it was hard to say who really won. You can either pick one, call it a draw, but once you start picking one, you can't go back and change it. So as I was scoring the fight, Porter was uh, dominating the first half, Arrow was dominating the second half, and I still had the fight very close, almost to a draw status at the end of the fight. So even we all heard, down? yeah, because he started so late. I felt like I felt like he fought too much of Porter's fight early on. And um, it could have been non-beneficial, but he was the champion, and you do have to beat the champion. So some of those rounds that I thought were close, maybe I should have just gave it to the champion, and that would change the scorecards instantly. So at the end of the day, man, um, I just thought it was a competitive fight. I liked the fight. Porter got dropped, um, and Arrow was started to trade with him, and he didn't really have a problem. He was comfortable in there trading with Sean, like like a lot of us have been in the past, and um, and he won the fight. So it is what it is. Ken in Haiti says, "What's up, Mr. Thurman? Are you still planning to be the top dog in the division again, or looking to cash out to continue your career out of the ring?" Uh, I do believe that I have what it takes to be number one again. Um, you know, it's just a matter of of training preparation. Um, being mentally strong and just you know give it my all you know um to to lose such a close fight you know i don't even feel like i got a real loss on my record i just feel like i always felt um you know how i used to say i got a oh i'm not afraid to let it go if you can beat me beat me because you know i'm not out here being beaten though so like i said i wasn't defeated right yeah i, I lost i wasn't defeated no one's defeated me. Um, they didn't take the, the fire, the hunger, or make me feel inferior to the competition of today's generation. So with that statement, you should understand how I feel and that I believe that I can be the number one welterweight in the welterweight division today. Rue in the 504 New Orleans says, any word when you're getting back in the ring? You said you'll begin to call this week. This week, I mean, I'm trying to get back ASAP. Whenever, whenever ASAP Rocky, Whenever they're ready, I'll be ready. I'm here. Jordan Baker here in Florida says, what's a couple of things you felt Danny Garcia did wrong in the fight versus Earl? He didn't throw punches. So, I mean, you watch the 12th round and you watch the best flurry that he's thrown in the whole fight in the last 10 seconds. Um, they both were loading up. I could clearly see that. I don't know how many people could really see watching the fight that both fighters were clearly loading up um, so you saw me load up today in sparring and when people load up on each other it makes both people hesitant and, and tentative you know but Errol he knew Danny was loading up and he was like well I'm gonna show you how I load up and I'm gonna swing at you the way you swinging at me and they were both missing those knockout punches on one another that's what happened when I fought Danny uh, I noticed that after he realized I had a good pop and I could catch him off guard, he tightened his guard up, he tightened his defense up, and he didn't want to get hit hard, he didn't want to get dropped in front of everybody, and that's what I saw Danny doing. So the one thing that he did wrong was he focused more on not getting hit than how to hit Errol Spence. He was inside the pocket, he never worked the double hook, the hook to the body, the hook to the head. I thought he was inside quite easily but anytime he was inside he wasn't letting his hands go his daddy was yelling at him at the end of every round trying to get him to throw more punches throw more punches and I think deep down he was just worried about being countered I think he could see Errol's power um, he probably felt a little bit on the arms and it just made him not want to be open to take a big shot but 
at the same time, he never let his punches go. And I mean, I think that's his number one mistake in a lot of the fights uh, that he's had. He's just got to up his punch count. He's got good timing, but when you're not timing stuff in between, you got to have a little bit of a storyline. Where's the storyline, Danny? Where's the output to say I'm doing something this round besides trying to land counter punches? So that that's the only downside I see in um, the way Danny fought. Errol.